Wisconsin Eye's 2014 election coverage is brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice for Wisconsin hospitals, supporting high quality, high value care in communities like yours. Wisconsin and I is at the Brown County Library in Green Bay. We're interviewing candidates for the 2014 election. We're interviewing Mr. Terry McNulty. He's a Republican from Forestville. He's running in the 1st Assembly District. Terry, welcome to Wisconsin and I. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, get, introducing me to the, to the rest of the state. Uh, Here, I've got a programming note first. No. Wisconsin and I appreciates the support of the Wisconsin Hospital Association, which represents more than 139 hospitals and health systems, for making these candidate interviews possible. Sorry to interrupt you. Now give us your basic bio, sir. Well, I'm Terry McNulty, and uh, people that know Terry McNulty knows I'm not a person that stands on the sideline. Uh, so uh, when Mr. Byers announced he was retiring, I decided it was the right time for me to run for, uh, run for this, this seat. I'm a small businessman, I'm a family man, I'm a person committed to making my, communi my community a better place. I've served over half of my life, 20, over 20 years in the Army, uh, Army Reserve, retired first sergeant from the Army Reserve. I'm a current president of the Village of Forestville, about five years on the Village Board there. And I did a term on the school board where I was treasurer of Southern Door Schools where we did a lot of great things without passing referendums. I've made uh, local rules and ordinances, I cleaned up some outdated ones, and I think we, we, most of us in the Republican Party can agree that uh, with less government interference, we can, we can um, that is the way to move forward and common sense will keep Wisconsin moving in that What's direction. What's the nature of your small business, Terry? I'm a land surveyor, McNulty, surveying and mapping. Thanks for the plug. Oh, <laughs> well, let's talk about um, public schools. Sure. Let's talk about vouchers and choice schools. Do you support choice and vouchers as an option to public schools? Well, school choice, I do support. You know, if if you're not getting something at your home district, you 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 need to have the right to be able to move your child to where you 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 can get your child what they need, and what you think they need. Um, and and I've done that. I've actually open enrolled my one of my daughters goes to Algoma School District, and one of my daughters is in my home district, Southern Door, where I was on the school board. Okay. Um, the vouchers now, on the other hand, that, that hurts our local schools by taking money away from them. And I would, I would rather see more if somebody wants to send their kid to a special school that uh, they'd be able to get tax breaks for that, for education. Um, but uh, if, if the school's not meeting, meeting, the, meeting the bar to get, get the kid ready to move on to that next level, I don't think they should be passing them along. And I'm afraid that's what happens too often. Um, the current state budget, as you know, took the vouchers and choice programs statewide, uh, but it put a, uh, a cap on the number of students at a thousand. If you're elected to the assembly, you'd vote on the next state budget. Would you vote to keep that a thousand student limit on school choice statewide, or would you uh, vote to uh, lift that cap? Um, wh what's your feeling on the future of choice? Well, I, I, I lean more towards people having some their own control. So I'm, I'm not in favor of a cap number, really. You aren't, okay, right. so I, that, that, that should come off in the next budget? Uh, I, I believe so, and, and like I said, this is, this is money that's in local schools. I, I don't really see it as a state problem. Okay, as you uh, talk to uh, voters, are they asking you about common core standards? If so, what, what, how do you feel about common core standards? There's, there's a few, there's a few that have talked about common core, and uh, there's, there's a perception that common core dumbs down education and I don't believe that I believe education starts at home um, I think any student can make as much as they want out of their education Southern Door we went through a lot of steps to to meet the coming uh, requirements of Common Core and it's a federal mandate so in order to keep getting those federal dollars we have to step step into that and, and do the Common Core it's a great idea that everybody's going to get the equal opportunity uh, not every it's equal funding, so I have the same resources. So in reality, it's, it's going to be a tough thing to come uh, to work with, and a lot of schools are struggling with it, and uh, it's just another one of those federal mandates would put more work out there and no money came with it. So. Some candidates that I'm interviewing, it may not be in your race, who's saying that Wisconsin should opt out of Common Core. Do you think Wisconsin should? I, I would I would hate to say we wasted a lot of effort at Southern Door getting getting prepared to do this Common Core, go go with that. Um, it, it's it's a good idea, and if, if some schools can't do meet the Common Core, I I, I hate to see them penalized, but I'm afraid it might happen. It's a, it's one of these like I said federal mandates, uh, and money is usually tied to it. Okay, uh, a question related to health care. As you know, the federal government told every state 
if you expand your MA, your MA program that provides health care to the poor, we'll pay for it for the first two years. Wisconsin, Governor Walker, the leaders in the Senate and the Assembly said, thank you, federal government, no. Was that a wise decision? I believe it was. Uh, the, the, our states, our states uh, the, the Constitution says we can govern ourselves. Our Badger pro pro Care program is a great program. Uh, maybe some people could pay a little more so it's uh, funded better and it can be expanded that way. Uh, but when you take money from the federal government, there are always strings attached and mandates. And like you said, it was for a year or two. When, when is the money going to get shut off? We don't really know. And let's say it's for a year. A year later, then we have to cut those, we have to cut those programs again. So I think it was the right thing to do to keep the control here in Wisconsin. With the importance of tourism to Door County and, and uh, Assembly District 1, uh, much of those tourists, tourists rely on good roads. But you know, you're aware of there's a $650 million projected deficit in the next two-year budget for the State Department of Transportation. So here's my question. Because of that deficit, do you cut back on our current program of building and maintaining roads? Do you raise taxes? Or how, how do you fill that gap? Well, this is a projection. You know, this next budget isn't coming out till 2015. It's June 2014 right now. Yes. Uh, we need to look at the projects that they're projecting to do, and, and some of those maybe don't need to be done. In in Sturgeon Bay, they don't want the, they don't want roundabouts on a four lane highway. I can I can tell you that. Uh, tourism is important more than just Door County. Uh, that's part of the economic development plan for Kiwani County, and 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 it's it's a uh, fishing is a big tourist activity there. Right. Okay, so. but you're not ready to raise the um, sales, uh, uh, the, uh, no, the gasoline I don't tax, I or don't. what you and I pay to, on our vehicles to register. I don't want to raise any taxes. I, I don't want to raise sales tax. I don't want to raise the gas tax. We, we need to uh, account for that gas tax money because there's a lot of different directions that's supposed to be going. And I do think uh, the Towns Association is, is, is uh, if there's, I think there's a resolution coming out where they want to see it equitably uh, distributed to how many miles you maintain and how much of that you get. Okay. I'm asking every candidate this because it's so timely. Your reaction to Judge, Judge Crabb's ruling on same-sex mm -hmm. marriage, Terry? Oh, we have a law here in the state of Wisconsin, I believe it's statute 765, marriage law. And uh, Judge Crabb, again, is a federal judge, and this is the state of Wisconsin. I think that was, a mis I think that was an over overstep by the federal government again. And uh, I, I'm glad J.B. Van Hollen got the stay. It's disappointing it took so long. And I'm sorry, but marriage is between a man and a woman. It's about family. Thank you. Um, uh, two candidates for attorney general say first offense drunken driving should be a crime. Now it's basically a citation. Your position? Um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, dangerous uh, event. Uh, I don't want to lock somebody up in state prisons for drunken driving, for especially first offense. Uh, it, it really does hurt, hurt you, when you when you go through that process. So um, it, it, it's not, it shouldn't be really something that's that severe, and I'm I'm, gl I'm glad the, I think the numbers are down on drunk driving. Okay, um, there are calls both in Madison and Washington to raise the minimum wage. Uh, you you run a small business. Your your position on that? Uh, raising the minimum wage is an inflationary policy. We're, it's going to cost us all money, more money in the future. Uh, I know you just talked to Mr. Baez, and the the, uh, the market needs to needs to tell you what you need to pay for people. Mr. Baez tells me up north where they they have trouble finding people to work in the tourist areas that are, are full time residents, they are paying them more to get them there, or they have to move travel farther to get there, so they have to pay them more. Uh, it's, a, it's minimum wage is a starting point it, when people have experience and they or they want to improve themselves and get educated, and then then they should be moving up in the scale. If they're not, you know, maybe maybe they need to move on to something that fits them better. But I don't believe you you mandate how much somebody has to pay an employee. Then how do you how do you not mandate how much somebody has to pay for your service? You know, it's, government doesn't run business. And then um, a question, one one more issue that comes from looking at your campaign website. You call for fair funding for public schools. So what changes are are, are you saying are are needed there, Terry? Well, I, I think I think we need to have the same uh, amount for every student. To every school, and I've, I've got an example. I didn't bring it in here with me, where there was a general funding, and a school in our district got eighty thousand dollars. Two other schools in our district, mine, got a slap in the face. It was like twenty-six dollars, and and Kiwani got four hundred dollars. 
you know, these are three schools about the same size. Why wasn't the funding about equal? And I, I know I know some bigger schools are getting more money than uh, what we're getting. Our, our our funding in Door County has been declining, and, and that I think I think we need to stick it stick fair funding with the pupil count. Okay. Is there any other issue that's important to your campaign that I haven't asked about? Well, the economy is important. Okay. And uh, in Kiwani County, we lost a huge employer, a good employer. Uh, High-paying jobs, are, some home prices, uh, values are well, values are higher than what homes are selling for. We and uh, that that's really makes a depressed area. And we need to improve our marinas and and and, and encourage uh, small business growth so that people come to the area and have something to do. And I, I like to see people help themselves and being a small businessman, that's the uh, state of New York is doing something great. We can, we can do that here in Wisconsin too, is encourage people to do something for themselves and, and make a way of life. And then finally, uh, do you want to highlight any differences between you and your opponents in the primary, Terry? Well, Terry McNulty is the working guy in, in this fight. Uh, a lot of a lot of these guys. One one runs a couple of nonprofits. Uh, one one's uh, experience is on the school board where they passed referendums, and uh, I have the experience of running a municipality, being on the school board, managing people, and, and the business. And the experience is the big difference between Terry McNulty and, and the rest of the candidates in this in this race. Okay, thank you. Terry McNulty of Forestville is a Republican running in the 1st Assembly District. The primary is August 12th. Terry, thanks for talking to Wisconsin. Well, thank I. you. Thank you.